Hi, this is Dr. Wallace J. Nichols. In this next episode, we continue the story of Force Blue as they heal the planet and heal themselves. In response to dual hurricanes, Maria and Irma, that devastated Florida and Puerto Rico, they were deployed to do special operations around restoring coral reefs. It's an absolutely amazing story. Let's watch and see what happens. We end here tonight with a group of veterans on a new mission. They become eco-warriors out to save coral reefs, and in some cases, themselves. Manuel Bajorquez has their story. With an oldie soundtrack, a dive boat slices through the sky blue waters off Key Largo. Meet the Force Blue Dive Team, a dozen of America's very best, all former Marines, Navy SEALs, and Special Ops guys, on a mission to save the nation's largest reef track. This is ground zero if we want to protect the planet. 47-year-old Rudy Reyes is a co-founder. He fought in three wars as part of the super elite U.S. Marine Recon Unit. It's really warrior stuff. A warrior takes action, and that's what we're doing here with Force Blue. Irma wrecked the reef. Some parts look like coral boneyard. Among the fixes, the delicate work of transplanting coral seedlings, creating an underwater forest of baby coral. But there's also plenty of heavy lifting, like this centuries-old 800-pound pillar coral ripped off its base by Hurricane Irma. Co-founder Jim Ritterhoff watched the team spring into action. You're talking about individuals who have lifted predator drones off the bottom of the ocean, right? So in about two minutes, they figured out we get six airbags on this, we can get it, cement it back on, and almost instantaneously, the color of this reef came back. But here's the rub. There is perhaps more important restoration work going on here. Yes. Beyond the coral. Oh. I was struggling with alcohol and substance abuse and, in general, massive amounts of depression. Like for so many vets, adjusting to post-war life is a challenge. For a lot of these guys, they look great, mm -hmm. they can function at high capacity, One. anything you ask them to do, but deep down inside, they're, they're hurting. Persons. But you put these guys in the right situation, you give them a mission, and there's no stopping them. Where I started and where I'm at now, it's... Uh, 180 degrees, and I'm only getting better. Admittedly, 12 guys are not going to save the reefs on their own. But to them, it's the mission that matters, a fight for something important, something bigger than themselves. I've spent about 23 and a half uh, years in the military. Uh, started off as a survival instructor for about six, seven years and then got my commission as a combat rescue officer. And I've been in the rescue line of work since then. Iraq, Afghanistan, just providing a, a rescue capability for the entire military. I think you have to have something down the line that's gonna fulfill you as much as the military does. And that's, that's really very difficult to find for every vet. Every guy that retires or separates, there's a massive space, you know, where all that was. And I think Force Blue, it's just gonna be a next chapter, you know, with a great mission. Now, I've been diving for over 20 years, and I've always been incredibly attached to the ocean. One of the great things about the mission that we have here is that we're taking extremely motivated, focused individuals that work incredible together as a team, and we're putting that to use. And we're gonna heal bit by bit. You know, but we're also drawing attention to what I think humankind needs to do to turn this around. I mean, we're all about protecting and saving, and this is the exact same thing. And it's never just the operators, man. It's really these people all over the world that are dedicated to the same thing. That's the, the whole family, the whole team. It takes the entire thing to make this work. I'm really looking forward to being a part of that. Yeah. There's a lot of interest out there in what we're doing. Obviously, this idea of repurposing these highly skilled veterans, giving them a new mission, and at the same time creating this amazing environmental workforce that could actually get in the water and really help a lot of these other organizations that just need manpower. Force Blue is not a therapy program. However, through doing the missions and serving others, it gives us perspective of 
what value our experiences have, as well as just the virtue of helping others and helping the ocean. Force Blue is this very conscious way of creating community, just finding the similarities, not only within you know, our culture, which we know very well, but within the conservation community. And that gives us you know, immense perspective that we do have a place in this world. As a scuba diver, and as somebody that's made their living working underwater, to give back and try to rebuild and try to recreate what you remember from 40 years ago, that's my dream, you know, is to put it back the way I found it. Immediately following our first training deployment, we were asked to come down to South Florida in the wake of Hurricane Irma. We had an opportunity to work with NOAA for about 10 days doing restoration of the, some of the damage that the hurricane had caused, restoring fragments of coral back onto the reef. We're always looking for new partners to engage in restoration with, and particularly partners that are able to help us at a moment's notice. After Hurricane Irma came up and we were trying to put together a team to get down here to rescue some of these coral fragments, we said, this seems like a perfect thing for Force Blue. So they immediately became my heavy lift team. We would go and find some big corals. I'd point it out to them and say, we need this thing flipped over and we need this thing moved over here. All right, no problem, let's get it done. The urgency is to get out there and get these corals turned back upright while the tissue is still alive. It's good to be needed, you know, it's powerful, it's personal. It makes me feel that I'm valued for something that I can do. You know, just as powerful as it is to see the minivan on top of a 60-foot pile of debris, it's just as powerful to see coral heads the size of cars ripped off the shelf and tumbled. That was 900 pounds of coral right there that we were trying to get from its side into a perfect upright position. And then we had to manhandle it over and onto a nice flat section of the reefs so that we could sit it up in the water column again. This is like one of the last ones that are in the Florida Keys, so it's pretty important to, to try and look after the ones that are left. It was amazing how, um, without having communications down there, how every single person was able to go ahead and interpret what they needed to do. When I hear some of the stories that these guys have experienced and the situations that they've been in, to me they're true brave heroes and to be able to work alongside them and see how some of those skills have translated into the marine conservation realm, it's almost like they're just fighting a different fight. They used to fight for our country and now they're fighting for our planet. They're so highly skilled, both within their dive skills, plus just simply like you give them a task and they learn like that. What they accomplished today probably would have taken us about three or four days had we been doing it ourselves. They got about 500 fragments cut and suspended on the trees, which translates to 500 corals in 2018 that we'll be able to outplant on the reefs. When I saw what these guys were doing, was I amazed? Yes. Was I surprised? Absolutely not. I started calling them coral warriors, we love Force Blue. We've been super excited that they've come down and have assisted us with our work. Their first mission was integral in our work and NOAA's work as part of this post-IRMA assessment. Techniques that we've developed for intervention and restoration are now adopted and used by people all over the country. And we continue to innovate and find new ways to do this to get greater scalability, to increase our genetic diversity, and to push the messaging out. We have been so lucky at Force Blue in partnering with NOAA and CRF because of the people who work for those organizations. Patty Gross, you're underwater with her and you see in every fiber of her being how much it means to her. Then you meet Tom Moore and you see how he has dedicated his life to constantly working to come up with better ways to get in there and help not just restore but to actually prevent destruction. Our reefs have suffered dramatic hits, but I am completely glass half full optimist. These are remarkably tough creatures. At the end of each day, after working in really unfavorable conditions, everybody got out of the water with, yeah, it's bad, but there's a lot of hope out there. And that hope bleeds over into them. Every dive, I got to see the reactions. Wow, we just did that how excited they were to know that they just saved a coral and who knows what else after that. I almost always take people over there because there's a lot to see. And when I came out here after the hurricane and it had been, you know, like you guys saw it broken and folded over like that, it was, it was heartbreaking. So for you guys to come out and actually put it back together and 
get it back upright so I can take people over there and hopefully everything starts to move back into that area. That means a lot to me. That's what we want to do. We want to be that helping hand that can actually up the ante for everyone. This is exactly what gives me an opportunity to look forward to the future with a smile on my face. John and I bunk right next to each other and we were hallucinatory exhausted the other night. We both looked at each other and I was like, and doesn't it feel good? And he just knew exactly what I was talking about. I was like, it's a good feeling to be this exhausted. You know, that camaraderie and to have a sense of purpose for something like this, you can't put a price on that. We acquitted ourselves very well, so much so that we were immediately asked to deploy to Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria to aid in NOAA's efforts there. Corals aren't just rocks. I mean, they are the bedrock of an ocean community that all the rest of the ocean life rises up from and thrives on with Force Blue. I was excited to see what these types of veterans could do for marine conservation. So right now we're rescuing at-risk frags from a thicket off the north side of Palomino of Elkhorn Coral. We will take those out and we're gonna transplant them to another site to help recovery over at those sites that were damaged by the hurricanes yeah. Irma and Maria. Clean a little bit in there, yep. and the cement will grab. grab. Something for the cement always to, to grab. Okay. grab on. Right now, we'll cement them down. We'll get between 50 and 100% success rate, and that coral will become a reef. The storm will hit with, with a lot less force because the coral is actually going to absorb that energy. And even better still, we can come back out here and see all the fish that come to live in it. We can take that piece of coral and put it in the right position to thrive. Not just that coral, but the entire community thriving around it. We're doing really good work. Over 200 corals that we reattached so far yesterday and today. When you're working on a coral reef, you're restoring a community. And you put it in those terms for these guys, you can't contain them. We cleared it away, uh, we knocked out a bunch of, uh, of the detritus and the algae. Then we took a bucket of cement out, poured the whole bucket out on the face that we cleared, brought the 300 pound coral head back on it but now we've located a couple more. It's like a construction site. You know, it's kind of amazing to see. And after all that damage, just putting it all back together, it's like a puzzle. I think it's incredible the work these guys are doing. It takes a lot of brute force. <laughs> Clearly you got the right guys doing it. It feels good to be back with the guys. It feels good to actually take the training that we had and implement into a real world use. That was one of the things I loved about the military is we had mission, we had purpose. There was something we were doing every single day and there was reason behind it. It feels good. You are in a situation where you are lost of what everything that's happened, you see so much destruction. Having Force Blue, having people outside the local people work so hard to help is overwhelming. When I'm down there and there's only 500 pounds of air or 400 pounds of air in my tank, I'm always looking at, it's going to matter to this one more, I can get one more, and that's how I keep pushing myself to save one more. I'm carrying a mound of Elkhorn coral, of which we're going to eventually transplant, and I'm thinking, we're giving this a second chance. So this is your second chance, this is my second chance, and we're doing this together. Five more. Six. Yeah. Six. 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 Twenty years ago, no one would have imagined separating their trash in America. Now it is part and parcel of day-to-day -day American life. I want to see the same thing done with how we view the oceans and the coral reefs and conservation and protecting creation as a whole. This is a warrior Samaritan project and everybody can relate because we all believe in leaving something for our kids. It's this hands-on approach that makes it novel and that makes it prone to, I think, great success because it's so unique, because it's something that we haven't really seen tried out so much before. I think the unifying factor of the team members of Force Blue is that we're the sort of people that when someone says it's impossible or it's not worth trying, we say, okay, we'll see about that. These are missions with NOAA, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. These are missions with people like Sea Ventures, one of the premier coral restoration dive operations anywhere in the world. With the Ocean Conservancy, maybe the leading voice in the marine environmental movement. That's the caliber of the people that Force Blue is partnering with. And I see the light in these guys. I see it in myself. I see a group of people who are finding something together that is life-changing. And yeah, that's why I'm proud of Force Blue. And without 
um, live corals on the reefs, those reefs degrade within a very short space of time. We've seen them and with those degraded reefs, that wave action from hurricanes becomes more pronounced and it means that it puts people's lives at threat. Fundamentally, one of the things that we have the opportunity to do here is learn about these things and then communicate those problems to people. Guys getting together and using our skills that we learn in the military that might have laid dormant for a little while, it does absolutely give a place for guys to reconnect with other brothers. It's a great connection back. When I think back on, on my military experience, like what do I miss the most? More than anything, it was just the community, being around you know, these like-minded individuals and a sense of, of mission and purpose together. Tell me how you got involved with Force Blue. Force Blue is fundamentally special operations veterans. We've all, through various services in various countries obviously, served in that, that type of role, you know, but you've got Navy, you've got uh, Army, you've got um, Air Force, and then obviously you've got the UK military with myself. I served for 17 years in total. Um, 10 years was in the Royal Marines and then the final seven years I served in a unit called the Special Boat Service. Served in Afghanistan and Iraq as well. My military service started after I graduated high school. I joined the Air Force when I was 18 years old. Went in to be an Air Force Combat Controller. Uh, Air Force Combat Control is uh, primarily air traffic controllers, so anything to deal with aircraft landing at runways, uh, taking off, basically the capability of taking over an airport and then bringing the whole fleet in, doing whatever we got to do, and then taking everybody off. How long were you in service? Uh, I did nine years in the Air Force. So I did my initial four-year enlistment and then signed on for another five. Was kind of at that transition point where I was either going to stay forever or cut it short. Uh, ended up having a daughter and so that played huge into my decision-making process. I decided to prioritize that. At the time, the, the recruiting slogan was for the Navy was um, accelerate your life. And just kind of, I, I was like, you know what, this, this could be a really good way to kind of, to kind of just boost my trajectory, you know, professionally and, and, and just gain some life experience and all that stuff and, and serve my country and, as well. Did a tour to Afghanistan in 2012. I served six years in the Navy. Um, I had been out for about four years and I'd been searching kind of for what I wanted to do. Um, in that process, you know, I ended up at SeaWorld. You know, in college, before the Navy, um, I, I studied marine biology. Got to learn more and, and do some more diving, learn more about the animals and, and learn, actually learning how to take care of them. You actually are perfect for Force Blue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've got the, the military, you've got the dive experience, you've got the, the marine biology. I was a special operations soldier for 22 years, and my first five years was as a U.S. Ranger when I was just a little puppy. After that, I became a special forces soldier, went to Germany. I built more schools and made appearances in more humanitarian missions than anywhere else. A part of that humanitarian mission is part of why I feel I still have something to give, something to use and, and serve the community because if this isn't a humanitarian mission to save the coral reefs, I don't know what is. I was a uh, U.S. Air Force uh, combat controller uh, for about uh, almost nine years active duty. Spent most of my time in the Middle East uh, and I've done some stuff in South America as well. What drew me to Force Blue uh, so much was when I when I was getting ready to leave active duty. The job that I came from was a very aggressive job and, and the type of job that combat controllers have can inflict a lot of devastation uh, you know in, in areas and for a good cause but I was just ready to to try to help rebuild communities um, in a different way <laughs> and Force Blue does that it rebuilds communities underwater for a massive ecosystem that that no one really sees. A lot of people don't realize it, but the Florida Coral Reef Track is the third largest coral reef ecosystem on the planet. And the problems that the Great Barrier Reef is facing are the same problems that the Florida Coral Reef Track is facing, only it's worse here. So in a lot of ways, this is ground zero for coral reef conservation. We wanna be there. We wanna be at the front edge of the fight. 
me welcome out to Lou Key. This is kind of the crown jewel of the Florida Keys. What we're doing out here is combating stony coral tissue loss disease. This disease has been working its way down the Florida Keys for about the last four years and it is hitting Lou Key right now. So we're out here to do what we can to save these corals, save this crown jewel. Let's make it happen. The coral disease outbreak that we're facing here in Florida is unlike anything experienced anywhere in the world. We are facing something that we don't really understand and we don't really know exactly how to respond to. And before you know it, you're just seeing a completely different ecosystem than you saw even five years ago when you dove these reefs. Um, and it's really heartbreaking to watch that in your own backyard. The coral reef not only impacts our way of life, but it impacts our economy in a huge way. I believe the economic impact for our, uh, all things coral reef related is $6 billion. The emergence of Force Blue has been incredible. This partnership really benefits from the things that both groups can provide. Our group with NOVA, we've got a, a strong scientific diving background and have done a lot of the research that leads to what we know today and where we are now. And then Force Blue brings this ability to go out and accomplish these amazing tasks that really just would not be achievable by any other group. Instead of being able to save 20 corals, we might be able to save 200 or 2,000. I feel like I value most in my life individuals that are, that are passionate about something. Just seeing the passion that people have, all these scientists from all these different organizations we've met, has been inspiring. We have so many differences, yet we have so many similarities. It's really something special. They've educated us, and we've given our muscle back to them in forms of everything we can do to help push their programs along, and more to integrate as part of that community together. The thing that strikes you is, you know, you, you get trained about this disease in the classroom, and then you get down into the water, you can see it, the white patches of exposed skeleton where the soft tissues of the coral has just died. There's so much of this disease about and you can see the dead corals where it's already hit and they just wiped out some of the corals and then you can see where it's spreading. So it's nice to be able to think that we can actually do something about this. When you get up close to them, man, you'll feel that physical connection with the, that coral. You can sense that it's alive. Well, for me personally, I was in rescue for 24 years in the Air Force. In my mind, the same thing, it's saving life. So this is a direct correlation for me. And um, yeah, I feel it deeply. It is urgent. That doesn't mean that it's beyond hope. It does require immediate attention and it does require innovation at a scale that we've never seen before. So amazing to be able to see them, these highly trained guys, learn what I do, do it better than me, and then also to see them really become inspired by wanting to protect the environment and wanting to, to win this fight. I would like to see Florida become an example of how we face these challenges and what we can do about it. This is Florida's moment to show people all over the world that when a community come together and say, you know, not on our watch, we can turn the tide. We try to utilize Force Blue as this new platform, a new voice for these different environmental conservation concerns that normally people might not listen to. But if a Navy SEAL is up there saying, hey, listen, let's stop using plastics the way we're using plastics, people are going to listen. It's going to take all of us as a community to solve these problems. You know, we can inspire people, but uh, the workload ahead of us is overwhelming and I think that we need to champion information and awareness right now to really harness that in a way that can affect change. What an amazing story, what an amazing organization, Force Blue, putting Blue Mind into action to protect ourselves and restore our planet. It's absolutely stunning. So share the Blue Mind message as far and wide as you can and get ready for this next episode. There's much more Blue Mind coming your way.